GPT-5 is not being developed, or so OpenAI says, the question is, in a world where every company is terrified of being left behind, do you believe them? Google itself is scrambling to build smarter tech to avoid being destroyed. So how likely is it that the leader in large language models just stops training its systems? What if I told you that OpenAI was still very much training their systems, but were using a clever trick to deceive us? By the end of this episode of AI Focus, you'll be able to decide for yourself whether OpenAI is telling the truth or working in secret. And stay till the end of the video to see what absolutely chilling thing GPT-4 is doing that has even its creators lost for words. Sam Altman is the co-founder of OpenAI and its CEO, the man in charge of the smartest AI on the planet. ChatGPT-4 was just released in March of 2023, and it and its previous version have already changed the world in many ways. For one, it's made workflows more efficient in multiple industries, which has also led many to anticipate the major job displacement this will cause. Frankly, Altman has come out and said that OpenAI is not training GPT-5, GPT-4's successor. He recently spoke at an event for MIT and responded to an open letter calling for a pause on all AI development more powerful than GPT-4. The letter included a signature from none other than Elon Musk himself, who also co-founded OpenAI, but left over disagreements on AI safety. Ironically, he called for a pause right before announcing his own powerful AI called Truth GPT. The letter addressed concerns over the safety of future systems, but experts in the field seem to be split. Some feel that artificial general intelligence, the point where AI becomes smarter than a human, isn't even achievable, while others like Mark Tegsmark feel like we're digging our own grave. And optimizing one objective function aggressively, blindly is going to take us there. Yeah, we have this pause from time to time, and look into our hearts and ask, why are we doing this? At MIT, Altman gave a rather condescending response to the letter, saying it lacked technical nuance. Check out this clip where you can almost feel the snarkiness oozing through his veins. Right, OpenAI, an earlier version of the letter claimed that OpenAI is trained GPT-5 right now. We are not in a for some time. Um, so in that sense, it was sort of silly. But we are doing other things on top of GPT-4 that I think have all sorts of safety issues that are important to address. Okay, so Altman says the notion that OpenAI is working on GPT-5 is silly, but they are working on expanding GPT-4. Isn't that kind of the same thing, though? Saying that you're not training GPT-5 is not much of a statement. And that's because when you're training AI, you can hide behind what writer James Vincent calls the fallacy of version numbers. This is the false idea that AI improvement in capability can be reflected in tacking on numbers like GPT-3, 4, and so on. Apple uses this fallacy every year with the iPhone as a marketing tool. The iPhone 17 is better than the iPhone 16, truly, because it's a higher number, duh. But OpenAI on the flip side could be technically developing something equivalent to GPT-7 while saying, hey, we're only expanding GPT-4, it's all good. One is using the fallacy to create the illusion of advancement, while the other is using the fallacy to create the illusion of no advancement. The focus on these systems should be on capabilities, not numbers. What can these systems do, and how can that evolve over time? OpenAI is expanding the potential of GPT-4 by connecting it to the internet for crying out loud, and they never said they wouldn't release GPT-4.5. And all of this development is leading GPT-4 to develop some pretty scary emergent properties, and we'll get to that later in the video. Before ChatGPT takes over the world, you might as well use it to your advantage. ChatGPT School is a comprehensive course that teaches you everything you need to know about ChatGPT and AI to streamline your content creation process, develop winning business strategies, and stay ahead of the competition. You can check that out in the first link in the description if you're interested in making your workflow easier. Now back to the video. As I stated earlier, companies are racing to develop AI in order to not be left behind, and Google is no exception. They recently just announced they're combining their Google Brain team with Alphabet's other AI team, DeepMind, to form Google DeepMind, the hopeful solution to otherwise dull efforts from Google's AI researchers. DeepMind was a UK research lab 
that Google acquired in 2014. Since then, it's operated as an independent Alphabet company, separate from Google, led by CEO Demis Hassabis. For music lovers, it's kinda like when an independent record label is doing great on its own, but then gets funding and support from a major label while keeping creative control. And DeepMind has been excelling indeed, creating video games like StarCraft II, building AlphaGo, creating the WaveNet voice synthesis system, and tackling protein folding to name a few things. The Google Brain team led by Jeff Dean, meanwhile has just been doing research and making small changes to existing Google tech. They did, however, create the transformer neural network architecture that led to ChatGPT, so that's pretty huge. The new super team of Google DeepMind will be led by DeepMind CEO Hasabis, with the Google Brain leader Jeff Dean getting the constellation prize of chief scientist. He will report directly to Google CEO Pichai. This merge may not be as smooth as some may hope, however. These two groups have been intense rivals that really don't like each other, and now they're in a forced marriage that will see them try to develop Gemini, the second attempt at a response to ChatGPT. This comes after an unsuccessful bard left many disappointed. But they'll have to get over it, because the stock market's perception is that Google has no idea what it's doing in the AI race. DeepMind, on the other hand, could change this perception. Their AlphaGo project alone generated plenty of headlines, as it developed a computer capable of playing the ancient Chinese game of Go. This was thought to be impossible because of the sheer number of moves needed to play the game. Google can use all the help it can get, and Hasabis says that Google DeepMind's goal is to create the next generation of breakthroughs and products across Google and Alphabet in a bold and responsible way. I say all of this to say that there's no way OpenAI stops training its systems while Golden State super teams are being built to stop them. The trend seems to now be to develop smarter AI with the tagline, we're only developing this stuff to be safe, so you guys can chill. But what is happening behind the curtain with GPT that's causing such a scare? Emergent properties tend to spring up out of these AI models as they increase in size. No one knows how or when these abilities are obtained. Um, and what you see here, and I'll move into some other examples that might be a little easier to understand, is that you ask the, these AIs to do arithmetic, and they can't do them, they can't do them, and they can't do them, and at some point, boom, they just gain the ability to do arithmetic. No one can actually predict when that'll happen. Here's another example, which is, you, you know, you train these models on all of the internet, so it, it's seen many different languages, but then you only train them to answer questions in English. So it's learned how to answer questions in English, but you increase the model size, you increase the model size, and at some point, boom, it starts being able to do question and answers in Persian. No one knows why. And then there's the theory of mind, which is what enables strategic thinking. In 2018, GPT had no theory of mind. In 2020, theory of mind started to develop within GPT with the strategy level of a four-year-old. By January of 2022, GPT had the strategy level of a seven-year-old, and by November of 2022, its theory of mind had reached the level of a nine-year-old. But the scary part is that we only discovered what GPT was doing two years after it started doing it. If that's not unsettling enough, GPT was found to have taught itself research-grade chemistry, and it is better than many of AIs specifically trained for research-grade chemistry. That means the average nutcase can now figure out how to go into the hardware store and get what they need to create nerve gas. This is an example of what releasing these smart AI systems to the public can do and there's no way to know what these smart AI systems can do and what they can learn. Italy is one country who doesn't like where this is going at all, made evident by its decision to ban ChatGPT altogether. The Italian Data Protection Authority banned ChatGPT and started investigating private concerns immediately. The regulator even gave OpenAI 20 days to respond to concerns like minor suitability and collection of private data under penalty of $21.7 million dollars or collection of 4% of its annual revenue. This ban could offer insight on how it affects these developing technologies and how Europe can move forward while balancing the protection of miners using these services. Technology, they didn't realize how manipulative, how deceptive it can be. They don't realize that the information they get is maybe wrong. This um, incident now with the ChatGPT is very important. It's kind of a wake-up call on the European Union. 
because even though we're working on this AI Act or the European institutions are working on it, it will not be applicable, I would say, for another four years. What do you think? Does OpenAI's claim that GPT-5 isn't in development, just an empty statement? What should regulation look like? Let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, click that video on the screen to watch something you haven't seen. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thanks for visiting AI Focus.